Mora. Let's continue with the story. Yesterday we talked about the Samaritan woman. Do you remember? Yes, sir. Yeah. She was at a well and Jesus kind of asked her questions about her personal life and told her that, well, some things, embarrassing things about her. And she's like, you're, you're a prophet. You are, aren't you? She says, a Jewish prophet. You Jews say that because we worship God on this mountain instead of a in Jerusalem, woman, says Jesus, the father wants true worshipers, people who worship him in spirit and in truth. But on this mountain, in Jerusalem, that makes no difference. The only difference is that you do not understand what you worship and the Jews do, because salvation comes through the Jews. I know the Messiah is coming and that we'll understand everything once he explains it all. And I am here explaining it to you. She suddenly runs away. Why does she run away? <laughs> Why does she run? She gets scared. No, she wants to go and get other people, the people that she was hiding from, people who gossip about her. She ran away to tell everybody that Jesus, Messiah, is there. Master, his, his uh, disciples come back and they're kind of curious. Why, why are you talking to this woman? We brought you some food, Master. I have food, Jesus said. Food you don't even know about. Hmm? Did someone else bring him food? Maybe that woman? My friends, Jesus says, my food. It's to do the will of the one who sent me here. A farmer, after planting the field, must wait until the harvest, right? Well, open your eyes and look at the field. Where's the field? That's the field. He's talking in symbolic language, of course. He says, those people, they are like a field. It is time for the harvest. It is time to reap what has been sown before I came. And the woman says to the people who are following her, he knew everything about me, my sins, things that not even the most gossipy among you knew, says the woman. Listen, God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. I will explain. And so Jesus stayed there for two days, and many of the people of Sikar town believed. Then Jesus continued on his way, returning to Galilee. Let's take a look at today's lesson about the Samaritan's woman. The Samaritan woman. The lesson is called True Worshippers. Who would like to read today? Dion, I, I don't think you've ever read to us before. Don't remember. Would you like to read today, Mr. Dion? Yes, sir. All right. Uh... <clears throat> the first part, Dion, True Worshippers. This part. Are you reading? Something's with the microphone. As the woman at the well spoke to Jesus, she realized that he knew a lot about spiritual things. She threw he was a Prophet. So she started talking about the difference between the place where the Samuel Samaritans. Samaritans worshipped at the place where the Jews worshipped, for she knew that Jesus was a Jew. Jew. But Jesus said, a time is coming when the place for worship will not longer be important. For God in spirit and in spirit is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that the Messiah, Messiah. Messiah will come, and when, when he comes, he will explain everything to us. Re Jesus replied, I am. He, the Messiah. That's right. I am he. I am the Messiah. 
Yes, she was talking about where to worship, which place to worship, in Jerusalem, like the Jews, or in Samaria, where the Samaritans worship. And Jesus says, it doesn't matter anymore. The place is, doesn't matter. As we talked about it previously, God is omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. And he's a spirit, so we must worship him in spirit and in truth, not a certain place. Place doesn't matter anymore. And here is the second part of today's lesson. How do I worship in spirit? and in truth and taffy will you read this part to us okay sir can a person who doesn't believe in god go to church sing praise songs put money in the offering basket and say a prayer yes even someone whose heart is cold towards god can do things that look like worship but are just meaningless actions Worship is not what we do. It is an attitude of the heart. That's why Jesus said that true worshipers worship in spirit and truth. Those who want to worship God in a meaningful way must worship him from their hearts in spirit, with open honesty, in truth. True worship comes from our love and respect for God. The Bible said, says, love your Lord, your God, with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. In other words, we should love God with every part of us. We should also be respectful in our worship, remembering that God is holy and powerful. As we come before the one who created us and who saved us, we should remember that our lives are not in our own hands, but in God's powerful hands, because we belong to him. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. Let's read the verse for today together. Ready, go. Ascribe to the Lord the glory. Yeah. Um, it happens all the time. It happens to us all the time. When I was your age, when I first started going to church, I kind of didn't like it very much, especially the sermons, you know, boring sermons. Sometimes you sit there and you do not want to listen to the pastor preach because it's, well, it's not fun. It's not always fun. Has it happened to you? If you've been to yes. a church? Uh, yeah. One day I went to church, yes. that happened to me too. Yeah, you just sit there and listen to uh, that pastor talking and talking and talking, and you're thinking, when he will stop talking already? <laughs> He's been talking for an hour. I have homework to do. Maybe that happens to you sometimes. I'd rather, you know, watch cartoons or read a book or play with my phone. We always have these kind of thoughts. I have those kind of thoughts too every now and then, especially when sermons are extra boring. And that happens all the time, right? But it doesn't make um, it doesn't make it unimportant, even though it's boring. It's usually very important things that pastors teach us in church. The same thing when we worship God, we can just you know sing when everybody sings. We can close our eyes and put our hands together, but our heart and our mind can be as far from God as possible because, well, we just think about other things. We're not, our heart is not ready to worship God. Our mind is somewhere else thinking about toys and games and I do not know, whatever it is that you're thinking about. You know what you're thinking about. What did I think about when I was at church, you know, when I was your age? Mm, I thought about... Playing video games, of course. Yes, I had that old little video game I played with my brother. You connect it to the TV and then you... Beep, boop, 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 beep, beep, like Super Mario. Back then we had that game. I didn't have all the fancy ones, just cheap ones. Playing video games with my brother or, you know, just going out and playing with friends. Or things like that. Or I liked music, so I liked playing the guitar when I was 15. I was just thinking about that. I'd rather go home and play the guitar, play with friends. I didn't want to listen to the sermons and my heart wasn't there. Same thing can happen to us all the time. Doesn't matter what age you are. 
you can be five years old or you can be 50 years old we all can go through the motions and not really have the heart of worship and that's what the important thing is we don't have to be in a place to worship god but our heart should be having the right attitude for us to worship god not the place but the heart that's what matters the right attitude before god and whenever, you know, you pray or sing or whenever you want to spend some time with God, if you're at church, make sure that your heart and your mind is in the right place. That's what's important. The place where you are isn't. Even now here, you know, we gather together virtually and worship God. And God is here with us. He is with you right now. You might not feel it, but he's there. Who feels him? Do you feel God? Yes. My daughter feels him. Wonderful. Maybe. Let me stop the recording and talk about the fun day.